Thank you so much for joining Expectations of the Culture. My name is Essence Clark and I am the host. The reason why I'm doing this episode today is because we have had this conversation over and over and over again, and I just want to join in on it. So <clears throat> a few weeks back, I went to a COVID house birthday party. So let me give my disclaimer before the COVID <laughs> police come through. <laughs> Uh, when I say a COVID house party, house birthday party, I mean, it was less than 10 of us there. We practiced social distancing, but we were still able to enjoy each other's company. So, you know, like normal fashion, we were having deep and intense conversation among men and women. And the conversation turned to um, full-figured women and or plus-size women. And I can't tell you why or how that <laughs> even came up because we weren't even talking about anything like that but um yeah the conversation came up so the statement that was made that inspired today's um, episode and series um, of podcasts that I want to release was that the majority of plus size or full figure women have no or low self-esteem because they have no or low self-esteem Men, especially those who are traveling and just looking for a good time, will target them because they are considered to be the easiest prey to have sex with. So I'm just going to let you sit with that statement for like five seconds, right? <clears throat> now I'm going to repeat it. <laughs> <laughs> the statement was made that the majority of plus size or full figured women have no or low self-esteem. And because of this, because they have no or low self-esteem and because the majority of us do, okay? Uh, men, especially those who travel or are traveling and just looking for a good time will target plus size and full size um, women because they are considered the easiest prey to have sex with. So <laughs> I'm sure you can imagine the disbelief and sheer shock that was displayed on my face when he said such a thing. And not because it was stupid that someone would even think that, right? Because that is just ridiculous. Uh, but several other reasons. First of all, the majority of the women there were full figured or plus size. So the fact that he had the audacity to even say something like that was just mind boggling. Um, his company that he had with him, she was a full figure woman. So I thought that was really disrespectful and rude uh, to make that kind of statement. And um, the other reason why I thought that this was just also a bit ridiculous is he wasn't even in the best of shape. <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, <laughs> and it's sad, right? Because the conversation is about full figured women, but the same rules don't apply to big men. And it's just re so this conversation just needed to happen at this point. Um, and I was blown away by the fact that some of the women even agreed with him. And I, and I couldn't believe that. So it just led me to believe that at this point, I needed to reach out to some friends and we need to have a real conversation because I'm confused. Um, I'm in a time where I have Ashley Graham, Tess Halliday, uh, what's it, Tabria Majors. Um, I mean, we have, we have women who are getting body surgery and don't get it twisted. The assets you are adding are full figured assets. Okay. Petite women don't have a fat behind. I mean, they just don't. I mean, it might be like cute for their size, but like people are adding assets that mm -hmm. qualify them to be considered full figured. Okay, yeah. so let's definitely let's have this conversation. And I don't want to keep rambling because I could go on and on. And I just want to introduce my guest tonight. I'm so happy to be having this conversation with her. Um, she's taken the social media world by storm, people. She's an aspiring motivational speaker, 
plus size model, super duper fly all the time, comedian, <laughs> body positivity influencer, wife, of course, and mom of two. Welcome, Leslie. Hey. Hey. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hello, thank you so much for having me. I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy you are here. Um, I do wanna share how I found you. So I am a um, serial social media user. I probably <laughs> need to work on it. Um, <laughs> and so I have friends who know that I love content. And my one of my dear and close friends, um, we call each other sister friends, she sent me your post. And then she sent me another post. And I said, well, let me see what's going on. Cause I'm <laughs> like, what she's saying, you know what I mean? And so I go to your page and I'm just stuck there. And I'm like seeing you dancing and you're saying things that I'm thinking that I'm afraid to say. And I'm just like, wow, I did this chick. You know what I'm saying? And then you did the next day, a video and pair of panties and a bra girl. Yeah. And I said, if I do not reach out to her for this body shaming series, I <laughs> like I have to, do this. you know what I mean? So yes. I'm so happy you agreed to do this with me because this is definitely what your message, I mean, your message, you have several different messages. I mean, you know, you letting us know as parents that we are all fed up with those dang on kids being home. Um, <laughs> we are stop being so hard on ourselves. Christmas yes. is just another day. They don't need yes. all this. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you were, yeah. I was resonating with what you were saying. Like, oh my goodness. She, she's, is she in my head? What's going on? <laughs> you know what I, I mean? Get, I get that from a lot of people, but I feel like you know, because I'm so relatable in the sense of like, I'm, I'm a mom, you know, I work full time. I'm, I'm also a wife. I have my own, you know, goals and desires and my own mental, you know, thoughts that I have, you know, that I, that I just started sharing just to share and it took off, you know, like now I do a word with Leslie, you know, once a week or maybe twice a week once something comes up and I feel very, you know, honored and blessed to be able to share that with the rest of the world and, and have people resonate with it and, and, and feel like, you know, well, wow, that's what I'm thinking. You know what I mean? Like, oh, this, you know, this, that she said, helped me. This made me feel like, you know, it's not so bad. You know, it could be better. You know, I can make it better. So I just work on, I just work on ways to, to, to deliver the message. I feel like that God works through me to tell and to say because you know i've had those thoughts of of negativity i've had those moments of of self-doubt and i feel like just through god all those things have gotten better for me and has made me notice that i can now deliver this forward and help other people so amen to that and thank you thank you for asking me to be part of this and to have this conversation with you because it's something that i've always stood for and that i've been through my whole life and that i am very passionate about especially you know, to show my girls that size doesn't matter. I mean, really what matters is corny and it's cliche. What matters is on the inside, but that means that what matters is on the inside for you, you know, how you feel on the inside is, was not that you're supposed to be good for other people. You're supposed to be good to yourself first in order to be good to others. So that's, what, that's, a big, that's my big message overall. <laughs> And that's a great message. I mean, you have me over here like catching whiplash. I'm just like, yes, <laughs> yes, say more, yes. And I think it's great that <clears throat> you have a voice that's relatable. And so because of that, I feel like that would broaden your platform even more because people want to hear from people they can relate to. They want to know that they're not the only ones feeling that way or thinking that or wanting to do this or you know what I mean like somebody had the courage to say it and that was the whole purpose of expectations of the culture just to finally be able to say listen you don't know nothing about what I'm dealing with shut up right. and just accept what it is stop having right. stop having such negative comments you know comments or viewpoints I mean like listen like seriously this year, 2021, it's all about protecting your energy at all expense. And if that means, yep. you know, removing someone mm -hmm. who is creating a negative type of space in your life, such as body shaming or, yep. you know, mental health stigma bias, bye. Yep. 
Bye. I survived 2020, honey, with COVID. I'm not going through 2021 go. with that. Hello. <laughs> so that's why this body shaming series is very important because I just need yeah. people to understand enough's enough. Yeah. And I need people also to understand how it affects people. It's not yeah. just, you know, so yeah. let me, let me stop rambling. Cause you know, we only have a certain amount of time. Yes. What yeah. I did want to share with uh, our listeners, I always try to provide some type of research. Um, I did not, I was not able to really get the type of statistical information that I typically get, but mm. I did find um, some ways that body shaming can manifest itself. Um, and I wanted to share that. So I found a website called WaldenEatingDisorders.com. They look like they're a company that assists with people who suffer from eating disorders. They do research and things like that. And it states, body shaming manifests in many ways. One, criticizing your own appearance through a judgment or comparison to another person, i.e., I'm so ugly compared to her, or look how broad my shoulders are. That's one way. Number two, criticizing another's appearance in front of them, i.e., with those styles, you're never going to find a date. Or I think one person told me one time, you would never find a man with money as long as you stay the size you are. Yep. And number no three, <laughs> number three, criticizing another's appearance without their knowledge, i.e., mm. Did you see what she's wearing today? Not flattering. Right. Or at least you don't look like her. Mm. <laughs> mm. So I thought this was really great information because typically when you see people speaking about body shaming on social media, they're talking about what's being done to them or to mm. someone else. But mm. body shaming also, it starts with you. That was the first mm. thing. Yep. And I yep. am guilty, guilty, mm. not because I have low self-esteem, but I right. just never realized that by criticizing my own appearance, I was body shaming myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So thanks mm -hmm. Walden eating disorders.com. <laughs> I am officially a body shamer. <laughs> so sad. But you know what? You didn't know. You didn't know that by doing it to yourself, you're also being part of of that um, specific uh, person that you, we don't like, you know what I mean? That does it to other people. Uh, body shaming comes from within. So when you are trying to be nice, when you're not, excuse me, when you're negative towards someone else, it's a reflection of how you feel about yourself. I mean, we've heard that bully, that bullies bully because they feel bad about themselves and they want to make themselves feel better. So you are your own bully sometimes. So example i had a, a cousin that came over from uh, for vacation and she was around here and she's like she looks amazing i mean she had lost some little some weight she doesn't look amazing because she lost some weight but that was her goal so she looked amazing for what she wanted to do for her so i was praising her like oh my god you look so great and the first thing she pointed out to me was like oh my god but look at my belly and i said to her and i stopped her right in her tracks i said you don't do that i'm not asking you about your belly I'm telling you how great you look. Accept my compliment. You have worked hard to get where you are right now. Think about that. Let me give you that. And she started crying. And she was like, oh my God. And I did this in plain old like hangout. And I said, don't do that to yourself. And I said, when you're gonna go, when other people are gonna continue to tell you you look good, you just accept it because it's okay. You deserve it. Okay. Do not feel like you don't deserve to feel good. And you wanna downplay your goodness and your hard work just to make other people feel better about themselves or because you think people are gonna think you're full of yourself? No, and if you are, that's good for you because it took you a while to get there. So don't feel bad about feeling good about yourself, I told her. So that has a lot to do with, you know, what you just said. You know, you start on yourself. You start talking bad to yourself first. You do. And when people tell you you look good, you'll be like, oh really, with this and this and this, what? What? Girl, I could go on forever, you go on. <laughs> So it's funny that you say that because I am going through a weight loss process now. Um, right. I had weight loss surgery and I chose to have it for health reasons. Um, I was 351 pounds and I was confident and I dressed cute and I didn't, um, like I wanted to lose weight, but you know, my weight wasn't like really defining me. 
So it wasn't a big deal to me. Um, I knew a lot of my weight had to do with my medication that I take for my mental health, um, for my, you know, the illness. And so um, I just kind of thought, mm, I'll just live with it. It'll be okay. You know what I mean? I didn't like feel bad about myself. Mm -hmm. um, and then <laughs> I was traveling. I was traveling for work and that's what really pounded the scales, you know, like killed me because I was, you're eating out three meals a day right. on the road. You know what I mean? So yeah, that stuff yeah. catches up with you. And so, um, and I was new to it. So I did all the bad stuff, of course, like, okay, what's the best restaurant here? And okay, mm -hmm. can we find hibachi there? And, you know, mm -hmm. let's have some drinks and, you know, mm -hmm. just complete spiral. Mm -hmm. Um, and I came home from one, uh, I was in New York for two weeks. They paid for, it, it was the best, best <laughs> work trip of my life. And, mm -hmm. um, I got on the plane and I had to use the bathroom like every five minutes. And I'm like, what is going on? This guy thinks I'm crazy. So I immediately go to the doctor. My blood sugar was so high. She said that I should have, I could have gone into a, like a, a, a coma or like, like a wow. diabetic coma or something. Yeah. It yeah. was so high. And I'm like, of course it was girl. I had bagels for breakfast, Chinese um, food for lunch, mm -hmm. you know, Italian for dinner. Yep. Of course it was high. Do you know where yeah. I was for two weeks? <laughs> <laughs> and so when that happened, I said, okay, I got to get a handle on this because I have kids and I need to yep. be here for them. And so yeah. I started trying to work out and it was like a yo-yo effect. And da, da, da. I say all that because I did not do it because of co lack of confidence. I did it for right. reasons. I was yeah. taking um, diabetic medication and I didn't want to anymore. Um, and so once I had the surgery, I was off the diabetic medication in seven days. So amen wow. to that. Amen. Um, but in that process, I've lost over a hundred pounds and that comes with wow. skin. And I saw you yep. mention something about skin the other day. And I was like, God damn yeah. this girl. She is my, <laughs> she is my other twin. Who is this woman? Because people will say, girl, you look so good. Like, and you're talking about from 351 come to on, where I come am on. now. Yeah, so yeah. I should be saying, thank you. I yep. worked so hard because I worked hard. Yep. Don't get it twisted. The surgery is a tool. It's not right. the answer. Exactly. I gained weight during yeah. COVID, honey. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I immediately, well, with my close friends, I immediately say, yeah, but the stomach, yep. the skin. But no. <laughs> but no. Every single time. I'm but guilty. No. I'm but a body no. shamer. Just, yeah, but. I'm not going to cry, but yeah, <laughs> I'm guilty. I'm going to be open about that but take but take something from this conversation and and the next time that you go to say something like that you be mindful be mindful of this conversation be mindful of how you want to you know be looked at right because yeah you had what you know you had the surgery you did this accomplishment you lost over 100 plus pounds. that all comes with that but not not everyone has that dedication to take care of themselves the way you have to maintain you know, the weight loss process to go out and work out in the gym and to work to make yourself physically better for yourself. No, but not everybody has that strength. So right there, you're already winning. You know what I mean? There's no need for a but after anything. Mm -hmm. So you guys we, see what I'm talking about? You see, you see why she's on here? You see why she's on here, right? I'm just saying. It's like I'm getting schooled on my own podcast. Like, girl, you need to get your life together because you are fun. I know. I, I, and thank you. I need that. Yeah. I'm, I'm open here. to receiving that feedback because yeah. I am guilty. I'm guilty of it. And then if my friend did that, I would be like, girl, what? Yeah. If you don't just you accept my compliment and be, yeah, mm -hmm. I would like, cause you know, I always, mm -hmm. just, I tell my friends, like, we'll just be on the phone. I'd be like, girl, you're so pretty. And they'll be you're like, beautiful. Uh, hey, but you are. You yeah. have no ugly friends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you're beautiful. You're beautiful. You know? So, okay, let's, 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 cause girl, we'll keep riffing and going. So we'll keep going. <laughs> give me your take on the statement that I shared today. So, okay. So originally I'm like, you know, maybe the women that he has come, they, that those type of men have come across have had, you know, low self-esteem. Only they know by their experiences. But then I'll tell you something. 
just like I said about the bully looking for, you know, the bait to make feel worse so they can make themselves feel. Better. Why do you think men go to the plus size women who has low self-esteem? It's because they themselves probably ain't feeling good either. So they're looking for the easier bait to be easier to attract them. It ain't the good looking guys that are here looking for the easy bait. They like a little competition. They like a little, a little back and forth. All right. So those who are looking for the easy target are the ones who are easy as well. So those men that are talking all that trash, mm, that's what they, they the ones with the low self-esteem, not the women they encounter. They think that the women they encounter are the low self-esteem ones, but they're the one getting it off to. That's what and they I don't thought know. that. I thought that immediately. Like, yeah. Are you really saying that? Right. <laughs> like, right. Come on. Um, Come on. I think at this point, I'm definitely hitting the gym a lot harder than you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. And let me just say, he also said he was not talking about me specifically. He said that he could, yeah, that was, let me add that caveat. The caveat oh, there was, oh no, but I could look at you and see that you're going to be hard work. I said, oh, okay, cool. As long as you know. <laughs> not only that, but you know, even that backhanded shit, don't give me none of that either. Please, thank you. I know yes. that about me because I ain't easy. You don't need to say that to me. That's what I would have told him. You don't need to point that out because I know. So I don't need to hear that from you. I think that I was in so mm. much disbelief, I know. Leslie. I, I don't couldn't blame believe you. he said it. Mm -hmm. And I'm mm -hmm. going to say this again. We have beautiful, full-figured women. I'm going to tell you, Tess Holiday. When I found her on Instagram, I said, if this isn't the most beautiful woman, yes. I, I mean, her hair, her, her face. skin, her features, her body, yes. the way she wears clothes, yes. the way she doesn't give a shit, the way that she'll take a picture with no clothes on. Hey. And, you know, she posted a video the other day and I wanted to reach out to her but I was like, you know, you're just one of the millions. So don't. But don't cut yourself short either. You do. But she posted a video and I resonated with it, not because I feel the same way she felt, but I get it. She said that in 2021, she is no longer posting videos of her working out to prove that she exercises. Yes, now, I saw that too. I, I don't do it for too. proof. I do it for accountability, right? And then I have people who come to me and tell me that I motivate them. So I do it with them in mind as well. Same. Okay. Same. Mm -hmm. But to admit or to acknowledge like, damn, maybe I was posting that stuff to prove to you guys that I do work out. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, yeah. I just don't understand at what point did we become judge and juror of everyone and what's going on in, in her life. And I mean, what was she, the first size 26 on the front of a Vogue? And you are really in my comments, bruh? Yeah. I, I, have, I have broken records. Tess Holiday has broken records. Yep. And you are on her comments talking about her body? Right. What she gets paid for? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, are you serious? And so when she said that, I was like, God, like, I wish I knew her and I could just be like, girl, I feel you. Let's work out yes. together. You yes. know what I mean? Yes. Because yes. I really, res I resonated with her, not because I do the same thing, but because I get it. And yeah. it amazes me that people are so, are so bold to, do to go in people's comments and say things that yes. are so hurtful. Yep. She said, I'm yeah. tired of crying about the things that you people say. Wow. Why are you doing that to her? She's beautiful. She has a family. Those are the, those are the unhappy people that are unhappy in their lives. And they're finding a way to make someone who's not even in their same caliber make feel worse. I mean, and it's upsetting that at the end of the day, you know, they are getting to her. Because no matter, like I tell my, my five-year-old, to tell her sister, you know, sticks and stones would break my bones, but your words would never hurt me. Hello. I, I say that to my baby girl to say, but sometimes words do that for her. She knows that. But just like my little five-year-old is, you know, five and a human, so is Tess and us adults who get hurt by those stupid words that, that come out of, you know, insecure people. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just really was hurting for her. I really was. Like, I just can't believe that 
This is still happening. And yeah. so the conversation needs to be had. We need to yeah. talk about it. Stop. 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 You do not know what you are doing to the mental health of people by shaming them for being happy with who they are. That's exactly what it is. You're shaming people for being happy for who they are, okay? And for accepting themselves, mm. no matter what journey they're going through. Because I'm not, we're not saying that being, you know, this bigger, you know, size person or even a very skinny person, we're not saying that neither are ideal. But loving yourself from the inside out is what counts the most, no matter what you look like. And accepting your flaws and the things that you find are not, you know, where you rather that be. Accepting those things is the, is the key to really moving along in life and, and to growing and to, pro and to prosperity. Because when you are negative about yourself, what may it be, you know, who you are sometimes emotionally, you know, physically, who you are, how you treat yourself, sorry, how you treat yourself affects how everything else goes on in your life. It really starts from the, from the mindfulness that you have about yourself. Mm -hmm. It's good and that being you compassionate. Said that. I'm sorry. Go no, ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Being compassionate. No, I was going to say about being self-compassionate. Mm -hmm. I was just reading about that. Being self-compassionate is accepting that you are not perfect and you're not born you weren't born to be perfect it's more about who you what you do to continue to strive for your own happiness for your own goals so go ahead yeah <laughs> agreed and it's funny that you said that because before we got on this call tonight i was having a conversation with my daughter um, she kind of rants to herself. I'm guilty of it too. Um, mm -hmm. but hers is kind of weird. Cause like, it's literally, I'm like, are you on the phone? Like, it sounds like she's really having a conversation with someone and she was ranting about what someone put on TikTok mm -hmm. and she thought it was very racist. And so okay. I said to her, I said, listen, it is very important to protect your energy at all costs. If someone is doing something that you do not like and that you do not agree with, remove them from your social media. 100%. And so when Tess Holiday did that video, I think it was yesterday or the day before that, I was like, that makes sense. Like, if you are doing it and it's still presenting a negative impact on you, stop. You don't have to prove that to no one. You don't. You know, you don't have to prove that you're exercising. You don't have to tell people why you're exercising. You, you, it, it's your life. <laughs> I feel like she also does it to motivate others because a lot of people of her specific frame um, do not feel motivated because if they feel, that's another thing. Fear is the enemy mm -hmm. and fear will keep you, it will help, it will make you procrastinate because you feel like obviously someone of her size is it's going to take a longer time to get where she wants or you want to be and i'm doing this because there's not specific where you know we want to be it's more of you know whatever whatever goal is yours so when you feel like we're further away from your goal it's harder for you to get up and do it it really is because it scares you how long is it going to take there and you use that to rile yourself up into not doing it at all and mm -hmm. so I feel like she should have never stopped posting because it is so motivational for people like you who work out and you're, you know, you have, you had a bigger frame and now working on a smaller frame, you know, people like me who I work out just to stay the same frame. You know what I mean? I, I don't work out to achieve a, a smaller or bigger, or I just want to stay the same in a fitter form. You know, I want to be stronger, mm -hmm. you know, and that, and, and size does not take away from you being strong. It doesn't. So you work and, out, other people work out for different reasons. Right. And I do not have a petite body. So I'm still going to be a no big No matter girl. what you're going to do. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I'm still going to yeah. have these big old legs. I'm still going to have um, round hips. I'm still going to have yep. full breasts. I'm, I'm yep. never going to be petite, petite. You know what I mean? Right. I'm still, I, I want to, and I want to stay curvy. I yep. don't want to be skinny. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. And that's not about shaming people who are thin or exactly. who are petite or who, mm -hmm. if they want to call themselves skinny, I'm definitely mm -hmm. not for shaming them because that's what works for them. That's not what I want for myself. There you go. You know? Yep. So, okay. So we got your take on that statement and you're right. Maybe 
that statement was made based on his own experience. You know, maybe based on his experience, it's easy for him to get full figure women or but maybe because he's full figure too. So anyway, um, <laughs> the next question I do want to ask you though, is what was your experience with body positivity growing up? Well, based on my culture of being Hispanic, Dominican specifically, we are not very body positive. Uh, we're not a very body positive community, you know, to my you know, aunts and uncles and, you know, even my mom, you know, being thinner on the thinner side was the, oh, you look so, oh, you look so much prettier. Like, and it would always be pointed out when you gain the weight and it would always be pointed out when you lose the weight. And hearing, you know, oh my God, this is in Spanish. I would hear, oh, you lost some weight. That would be my ultimate goal all the time to hear that every time I would see somebody have a and see. And why was because every time that I would, it would be associated with, oh, you look so much prettier, you know, next to the, the, oh, you lost some weight, you look so much prettier, you know what I mean? Like, oh, look, you know, I'm going to say in Spanish, oh, mira que bonita tu ta. like as if me being, you know, a little bit thicker, because I've always fluctuated within the same, you know, I've always stayed kind of in the same, my frame has been, it is, you know, having after giving birth, it's gotten a little wider, my, my hips and my ass. But overall, I've always had the same type of a flat stomach, curvy body. And, you know, every time that I, like I said, every time I would, you know, take a diet pill or I would do some crazy diet or I won't eat, you know, even when I was doing all of that, I would get that response. So I thought that those are the things that worked for me. So I was never body shamed, but I was always applauded on when I was thinner. So that made me feel like that was the that was better if i was skinny or the or you were reminded of what was right. viewed as beautiful right on a consistent right. basis yeah right right so it's a interesting. lot interesting mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. that's still body shaming but it's kind of like manipulative kind of you know exactly. what i mean <laughs> without even but without them even knowing right, right? because nobody <laughs> figured that i was taking these diet pills to be you know i, I was doing this like just on my own you know what I mean? Nobody told me anything. Nobody, you know, they, they will call me like, um, in, in Spanish, it's gordita linda. In, in English, it's like, you know, pretty chubby girl. And it would always be connected, right? The, the, the fact that I was chubby was always in everything. You know, that was always, it was for my friend. Oh, I'm the chubby friend. Oh, you're a chubby sister. Oh, you're <laughs> It's always been, wow. you know, within my title. And I didn't accept that. And every time I heard it, it would tr trigger something in me that made me want to be thinner. You know, and it, it was throughout my whole teenage years that I experienced a lot of up and down with weights, a lot of unhealthy shit mm -hmm. that led me, that led me to a lot of little moments of like, oh, you look so good. And then back to, you know, the spiral and then back to, hey, you look so good. And then back to the spiral. So I always look for that specific feeling. And I never achieved it wholeheartedly till I became comfortable with who I was, no matter how, you know, what size I was. Like, I, I'm a bad bitch no matter what. You know, because I didn't ever lost that. I was still confident. You know, I was battling myself and no one knew because on the outside, I was always together. But that was because I was drinking diet pills. And I, was, I wasn't sleeping. I wasn't eating. I was, it was a whole bunch of shit I wasn't doing. And I was doing. But nobody knew that. So I, my confidence, everything stayed intact. So I was kind of like a hidden, you know, it was like a hidden trauma. So that's what I was going to ask you. So with that being said, doesn't sound like it was always positive. So how did it affect you mentally? Well, <laughs> what I just said, it was that I, <laughs> I, I battled throughout, you know, my whole, you know, high school, I'm going to say high school career, <laughs> through my whole high school career, because mm -hmm. I mean, I was always the chubbier one of all my friends. You know, I grew up in an in association with a group of girls that were all thinner than me, you know? So every time I would be the one to ask, I would be the one to ask, to be asked to dance last, I would blame them, oh, maybe it's because I'm chubby. If I didn't have a boy that liked me, oh, it's because I'm chubby. Or if I, you know, if I liked the boy and I would told, you know, they would tell him, oh no, I like, you know, my skinnier friends, you know? So I had a lot of that happen to me. And like, again, I never lost my confidence because I knew who I was and, you know, what I had to offer. But it definitely affected me and drove me to all those, you know, all those rounds of diet pills and, and trying everything under the sun to lose weight. And yeah. 
And I say that it, it affected me because I could have been better. You know, if I would have had this mentality that I had after my 20s, throughout my teenage years, I would have been much, I, I mean, I was good, but I would have been much better. I definitely know that those diet pills affected my mental health. I, I, there's no, there's no diagnosed, you know, this is like, there's nothing diagnosed there, but I definitely believe that it did. Mm -hmm. I mean, in a, in a way of, you know, of yeah. food deprived. Yeah, I wasn't having any nutrition. I was freaking fainting and shit. And I, and I would just be like, I don't care. I'll be skinny. Like, <laughs> wow. You were it determined. Was, I was determined, girl. I was determined. And because I knew what I was doing worked, I always had that fallback plan. Like, I would do bad. And then I'm like, oh, I could take these pills. And, you know, I'll be back to normal in no time. Mm -hmm. But that was messing me up. Yeah. Without me even knowing. I'm telling you, I was devastated when um, me and my friend we were talking about you know how you talk with your girlfriends about what you want in a spouse or a partner and so no one ever says they want the broke dude no one ever <laughs> says i want the dude i ain't got no job girl okay so you know we're talking about what we want and we want a successful partner and she said well you know <laughs> rich men don't like big girls and i was like oh and he was, she was like, no, like when you're rich, you want a trophy on your arm. And wow. that looks different. And um, again, here I am, I'm a confident girl, but I was just like, oh, that's kind of deep, right? So mm -hmm. I'm not qualified to receive the type of partner that I want in life because of my weight right? Like mm -hmm. my partner in life that was created for me will love me despite of how big I am or how small I am, right? Yeah. But in society, when you have quote unquote men who want trophies, trophies don't yep. look like me. Yep. But then you run to get the smaller women who have the full figure features, like the big booty and the fake boobs. But it's cool. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying. You right. know what I mean? Right. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> it's cool. um, so, okay. We discussed about, we discussed your, you know, your growing up with body positivity or not. Um, right. And also, I just wanted to say, I know you said you would never receive a diagnosis from mental illness. Um, I definitely want everyone to understand this podcast is not just about people who have mental illness. This podcast is about being aware of your mental health and taking care of it, whatever that yeah. means. Okay. Yeah. So with that in mind, what do you do to stay body positive? Like, what do you do to stay in love with your body? Well, I talk to myself nicely. I wear nice things. I wear things that flatter my shape. If I feel too tight in some pants, I'm not going to fucking wear them. You know why? Because honestly, no, come on. Sometimes, you know, we want to go to our clothes that, oh, you know, oh my God, I'm getting a little bit. And instead of, you know, accepting that, oh shit, it's a little too tight and forcing yourself in and I'm feeling uncomfortable. No, no, wear the ones that are a little stretchier. You know what I mean? I don't buy new stuff because I plan to stay in my same realm. Of, you know, weight wise and, and clothes wise, obviously, that's everybody's goal. Like, either you want to lose or you don't want to have to buy bigger clothes. But I make myself feel good in my clothes. That's a big deal for me. You know what I mean? I, I like to, to appreciate my body. I like to talk mm -hmm. to my body. Mm -hmm. You know, I like to touch my body. Give myself some kisses. You know what I mean? Like, yes, baggy boom. That's how awesome. are you? You know what I mean? Like, all right, Sandy Line. I make sure I look at them. Okay, we here. You know what I mean? We still here. Yep. <laughs> They're here. Yeah. And this is who I am. And accepting myself physically and in all the flaws that I have. You know, I'm gonna do this because you know they're not my flaws. They're just who I am. Mm -hmm. You know, and all my flaws is is the tool to to maintain it. I mean, if you feel good about you, everything, everything is going to be peaches and cream. Sunny yes. delight. Mm -hmm. Okay? A hundred percent. If you are feeling good, everything around you is going to be good too. You wake up feeling good, guess what? The whole house feels like you're in a garden. You know what I mean? That is, that is all on you. So that's why I try to keep my mindset. I, and how I do it, like I said, it's just praising myself and giving myself the luxuries of, of giving myself what feels good to me. Right. Okay. That, I mean, agree. And that's important because, um, 
I'm definitely going to, I want to do what you just said. Like, I want to physically show my body love, like kiss it and yes. talk to it and say, hey, mm-hmm. you take care of me and yep. you get me from point A to point B. Good job, body. Like, yes. I'm, I'm going to start doing that because I've never, ever thought of doing that before. I do do what you said. I do wear things that are flattering. Um, also, what I just recently did is I bought a gang of workout clothes that are flattering and cute that I can feel comfortable in because guess what I'm not gonna lie sometimes you go work out and you don't have time to take a shower right away yep. so I still need to be cute after yes. I work out <laughs> and yes. I want to feel good yes. within my body you yes. know what I mean yeah um but I'm gonna add that physical aspect of it so I can actually I mean, see it you know what I mean what I say and I compare it to is when you have plants, right? They say you water those plants, you talk to your plants, they grow. and it helps you, right? And they, you nourish them with love and you help them and it helps them grow. If a plant is dying, you got a leaf like that. You talk to that motherfucking leaf and that leaf is going to be like, ah, bitch, we here. Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yes. So when you do that with yourself, mm-hmm. there, there is no negative outcome. There's, no. No, there, there's nothing to lose. It's you on you. Do you guys hear Leslie? You heard her, right? Start talking to your body. Yeah. Hi, body. Thank yes. you, body. You yes. do so good, body. I'm yes. gonna put some good old food in you, body. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna oil, <laughs> I'm gonna oil you up, body. Yes. I'm about to put oil. this good lotion on yes. you, girl. Cause you I'm gonna make you smell care. good. <laughs> I agree. Listen, so, that is your that is your number one thing to do every day in 2021. Tell your body how much you love it. Yeah, perfect thing yes. to do. So yes. to add to that, how do you promote great mental health for yourself? Well, I accept the moments that are not bad, that are not good. You know, in order to to get past those moments, you can't put them aside. You gotta sit with them, accept them, and figure out a way to come out of them. Right. Um, I'm like, I, I just told you today, you know, my morning at the mornings for the past two days have been starting a little. Mm, why? We were on vacation. The kids weren't doing remote. I was just hopping on a computer for myself and doing me for two weeks. So having to get back in the zone plays up, plays a part in my mental health. In the sense, like, I feel like it's like I'm a ticking time, a ticking time bomb. You know what I mean? I'm a, I'm a flip out. Like, I even cursed today while my, my five-year-old was on Zoom, and the teacher was like, hey, hey, hey. And I was just like, oh, my God. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> Listen, it's my first time. And I, right away, you know, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. But then again, I'm like, why the fuck am I apologizing? Like, I'm in my house. I'm in this environment. I'm just letting a little steam off. I didn't want to curse. It wasn't to my child that cursed. I cursed to my child. <laughs> mm-hmm. I get it. Like, it's just accepting yourself. Mm-hmm. Like, talking yourself off of that edge. You know, when you're feeling like you just want to throw your fucking self. It's about really being mindful. With the words for today should be mindful. Because being mindful helps you get through a lot of shit. Because sometimes mm-hmm. you don't take the time to evaluate the situation and see how important it is. You know, why are you so mad? What got you this way? Like, it wasn't mm-hmm. really this? Or was it this thinking? Like, so if you do that within your own mindfulness, mm-hmm. it'll kind of diffuse your own bomb. Right. And it's like you're disconnecting the wires. To, to and to, you know what I mean, and it's not gonna allow the time, the bomb to go off. Like you, you, you working yourself out of that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You got me right. <laughs> mm-hmm. I definitely have you. Cause listen, I think it's great that you make sure you promote great mental health within your life. Um, mental health is not just about mental illness. You, right. Everyone needs to take care of their mental health because if you don't, it could trigger mental illness. You know know what I mean? I mean, what do I do to promote great mental health? I take my medication. Okay. I get sleep. I love my sleep. Do not call me before 10 a.m. on Saturday and Sunday. I love my (laughs) sleep. You know what I mean? I get my sleep. I get my nails done every two weeks because that's something that I have to do for myself. I get a massage and a facial every month because that's what I need to do for myself. And I'm about to add spending the weekend in Atlanta once a week, once a month, because like, I just need it. I have teenagers, girl, in this house and Mm. I'm trying not to kill them. Hey, (laughs) they already (laughs) home all day. All day. Yeah. So (laughs) what am I doing to promote great mental health? I am taking care of essence. Hello. Whatever that looks like and whatever your name is, take care of you. And yes. you determine what that means. You don't yes. make you don't let anyone determine that for you. 
Yes. If you need to be off every Friday at the hookah lounge by yourself, social distancing in the corner for your mental health, please do that. Please. Please. That has nothing to do to be okay 365 days a year. You know what I mean? So I just really, I'm really, really, really wanting to promote great mental health and taking care and being cognizant of it. You know what I mean? And making sure that that you're okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I always also, say that too. Sorry. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I always say that to, to my friends, you know, that's an advice I give to my, my, my best friends all the time. You know, when they're having those, you know, little mental breakdowns, I'm just like, did you take time to do something for you? You know, I write at night for myself when it comes to what do you do for your mental health? I write about my day at night. Um, I, you know, take my breathers in my balcony. You know what I mean? I make myself my coffee and go take it, you know, drink it in the balcony. That's what I do in my mornings. Like, those are little things that I do during the day. I create my content. That's a, a way to, to escape for me. So that's how I deal with my mental health. That, that question that you asked, I said in the moment, how do I deal with it when I feel like I'm going to lose it? But overall, how I maintain a, a wholesome, you know, uh, a, wholesome, a wholesome personality really is, is by taking those little things that I enjoy and really like giving it time. You know what I mean? Whether it's writing or creating or dressing up or, you know, doing uh, whatever the hell. It's for me. Anything that, that I do that is for me. I share my whole life with my kids and, and my husband. I mean, we have, you know, we all live in, the, in this, this apartment on an everyday basis, you know, going around in circles. So it's important that we all get that away from each other. You know, we, yes. we promote that within, our, within each other as well. Yeah. Especially mm-hmm. now. Yeah. Especially during COVID, I mean, when we're stuck March. indoors, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. Be safe. New, uh, yeah. Be safe. Wear your mask. Right. If you if you feel like you want to wear gloves, wear gloves. I have two hand sanitizers in my purse. I keep them in yeah. my car. Yeah. Uh, my daughter went to the gym with me today, and I hand sanitized her hand after everything she touched because she has asthma. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean. So be safe, but take care of you. You have yeah. to. Nobody else yeah. is going to do it. Yep. Nobody yep. else is going to do it. hundred percent. So, nobody else. How would you like to use your platform to further support and promote body positivity? Well, like you mentioned earlier, I did that video of and myself and a bra and a panty, which, you know, took a lot of courage, not only because, you know, of what my physical body looks like and what the norm looks like, but also because I have a husband. And would that be disrespectful to him? If this is not a this is not a bathing suit, this is a bra and panty. You know what I mean? So before I put it up, I, I sent it through him, hey, this has a bigger, I have a bigger, this has a bigger voice than what the video shows. You know what I mean? That's what I told him. My message is bigger than what this video is. And he said, you know, go for it. And I'm so glad that I did because it really, it was shared over 200 something times. I mean, it was reposted all over the place. I mean, I, am, I was so thankful that I did put that out there because of, of what, what that means to other women and how I inspire other women to, to really love on yourself, like I said, and, and accepting those little nicks and nacks about yourself that you just think that are not normal, but every other woman looks exactly like you mm-hmm. and have the same thoughts as you do. So instead of like, hating on yourself like share that and say hey girls you know look what look what we have yes like you know really like i said showing love to yourself a verbal and, and i know for sure you instill that in your children then because they, they physically see you doing it you know a hundred percent my oldest like i mentioned um on my one of my pod not my podcast one of my wine wednesdays i wanted her to do it with me and to talk to her and to the audience about you know, what it is like, you know, to grow up with someone like me, you know what I mean? Do you feel forced to love yourself or is that really how you feel? And I am so thankful and grateful that she really loves herself, that she knows what her values are. And she knows that no matter what anybody has to say to her, she's a good looking girl. She's smart. She is beautiful. She is strong. Okay. And she is fearless and a hundred percent want her to know that People are going to have negative, th- negative things to say. But what you feel about yourself is what counts the most. Mm-hmm. And, I, and it has worked. And I am so thankful for that. And my little five-year-old, I mean, she, she's in love with her stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I mean, she That's awesome. <laughs> and um, it's great that you include them in what you're doing. Um, I did a recording with my daughter. Mm-hmm. And um, she has a diagnosis of, a, a diagnosis of ADHD. 
And she said she was cool to talking about it. So I said, right, let's do a little 15, 20 minute podcast talking about, you know, your mental illness. And, you know, I was so proud of her that she was willing to talk about it. And then I was like, of course, she's willing to talk about it. She doesn't know bias or stigma behind it because you never right. showed it to her. Yep. Yeah. So we instill this in our children. We can yeah. get rid of this stuff with this next generation. Thank God. Because this they has been say, going on for way too long. And not only that, the the stigma of, you know, of, you know, what you're supposed to look like, but also how your life is supposed to go. I mean, let's think, let's think about it. I was, I grew up with, you know, like I said, I'm Dominican. My Hispanic parents thought that having a nine to five for 40 years was gold. Having a pension and a plan and whatever the fuck. I worked in the hospital, New York Presbyterian, for 10 to 11 years of my life since I was 19. So I went into that realm because that was a realm. And it's like once you're in there, you're like everyone thing, everyone tries to sell you this dream that this is what you're supposed to do for 30, 40 years mm -hmm. until you retire. And then like, and that's a dream. And I want to break that stereotypical mentality as well with my children, because if you want to start your own business at the age of 18, when you come out of high school, let's do it. You know what I mean? Education is important, but so is being yourself and working on your own goals and your own and using your own creativity to create a life that you want for yourself. So I'm teaching my kids from this age to live with intention, to use the brain, the, the power of the brain and the power of your thoughts and the power of your of your words on even on paper for your future. And if I can get them to do that from this age moving forward, because I have that knowledge now, girl, I'm gonna have me a whole president mm -hmm. by, the, by the time by the time she's 30. You know Absolutely. what I mean? I I believe that they are capable of whatever they want to be capable of. Mm -hmm. And if we was taught that, at least myself, excuse me, right? If I was taught that from a young age, who knows where I would be? Mm -hmm. I think that it's very important that you instill those things early. So, you know, when COVID hit, you know, we've always been taught, leave, create generational wealth, right? Mm -hmm. Leave a legacy for your children. What are you doing to leave a legacy, to leave your name here on this earth? And I'm like, mm, I wouldn't mind creating a legacy and leaving something for my child, but why not help my child create her legacy now? Mm -hmm. So that when she graduates from high school, she wants to go to college, she can, but if she doesn't have to, and she doesn't choose to, she doesn't have to, and she can take care of herself. Right. So when right. COVID hit, I said, hey, let me tell you, one thing you're gonna have to learn is to watch the climate of the world. And that means what is going on and how can you capitalize off of it? And there's going to be ways, there's going to be situations that you just can't capitalize off of. Right. COVID, I'm about to show you how to make these face masks, girl. There you go. <laughs> and she yeah. launched code 10 and she made a few hundred dollars off of it. And oh, she was happy amazing. with it for the summer. And, yeah. you know, she had some pocket money and yes. it, it gave her experience. And yes. then right before 2021 came, um, I went on a she treat. I went on, excuse me, a me treat. I went away on a retreat by myself. It was amazing. But before my kids left, we did vision boards. And I talked to them about manifestation and visualizing what it is you want in life on a daily basis so you can manifest it. Yeah. And I didn't learn about manifestation until I was well into my 30s, maybe, like to understand it. Yep. Um, so yeah, at 14, we're going to start that now. Yep. 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 Right now. So I actually ended up doing two visual boards. Um, I did one for business and I did one for my personal life and it's, they're hanging up in my closet that I go in every day and I look at them right. every day. Um, right. because, um, I, I, it's about living intentionally. That is yep. ac absolutely yep. the perfect phrase you have yep. to live intentional and i yep. think 2021 made us realize that yes in some yeah. shape or, in some way shape or form yeah you know yeah. so well you know what this has been amazing um i am just so happy that we did this i think that people will again be able to resonate with you and hear your voice and be like God, she is speaking to my soul right now because <laughs> I mean you really you really are speaking in a in in a way that 
it could touch more than one person. You know what I mean? And so I just wish for you all the success in the world with whatever it is that you want to do. Because I feel that you are here and you are purposeful and I want you to live in your purpose. And I can't wait to see what that looks like for you. You know, as I'm trying to go through mine, I'm so excited to see your journey. Thank you. you. I am so excited to see yours. Thank you. We'll yes, be doing it together, just, girl. Yes, we, I'll be on here when you have your, you in your own studio. I'll be like, girl, come to Georgia. Yeah. And we're going we're gonna to start filming in person because I got my studio and we, I cannot wait. Yeah, we go. I like all yes, of that. Yes. I'm actually going to have a studio in my house that I'm going to build. So, yeah. There you go. There we go. Hello. I said it and I'm going to keep saying it you know until what? that gonna... thing comes to life. Amen. I'm going to Georgia <laughs> sometime in April. So, no, mm-hmm. don't you, mm-hmm. don't tease me like that, girl. I'm not teasing you. My when you get your flight, having the baby, yes. Okay, all right. I'm going for sure. That's all I'm saying. When you get your flight, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm excited. What I would like you to do, babe, before I let you go, because hey, we got to get back to our families and back to yeah. life. Share your social media, your websites, like how if people wanted to get in contact with you, how would they get in contact with you? All right. So uh, right now I just have Instagram and my Instagram is L E Z L E E zero nine. And there you can find a little bit of comedy, a little bit of fashion info, a lot of body, po- body positivity and a lot of inspiration and motivational speaking. I mean, on the day to day, you will see me ranting, supposing about my fashion to, you know, something related to modeling. I'm just an all around, um, Good person to have on your feed just because it's all always going to be positive. <laughs> yes. And, and listen, guys, <laughs> if you are a person trying to live intentionally and also a person trying to protect your energy, she is a great person to have in your timeline. One thing I learned this year, if someone is not impacting you in a positive way, why are you giving them any access to your life through your social feed? Yep. Think yep. about that. If it's not impacting you positively, why are you giving them access to your life? Right. <laughs> right. I, I read that on my Mitri and I was like, girl, bye. Unfollow, unfollow. Exactly. Unfo- exactly. Yeah, you don't impact me positively. Yeah, you got to go. I mean, I was deleting yep. blogs, girl. I was deleting everybody. If you are 100%. not setting in my spirit, happiness and positivity and joy i do not want to see you so yep. please yep. check her out at l-e-z l-e-e-09 again that's l-e-z l-e-e-09 um you could get in contact with her through her social media that's how i got in contact with her i got her phone <laughs> number now though so yeah <laughs> and um let me we see the last thing <laughs> Would you like to leave a message for my listeners? Yes. Yes, I do. I want you listeners to know, understand, believe, and feel that love comes only from you first before you can give it to others. Life will get better only if you make it better for yourself. Use your power, use your mind, and use your mindfulness to get through life in the most positive and best way that you can, leading with kindness and love at all costs. Amen. That was beautifully Amen. said. Amen. Beautifully said. Um, well, I'm definitely going to leave the same message. I leave every podcast with my followers and my listeners. All right. Um, listen out there. Check on your strong friends. <laughs> listen, I'm dead <laughs> serious. I mean, we may be strong, but we need you to check on us too. <laughs> we can't always be checking on you. Check on us too. Thank you so yeah. much for tuning in. And I'll see you on the next episode. Bye, guys. Thank you, Leslie.